Hi everybody. Okay, today we're going to be looking at Concert Snare Etude 2. Now, this etude, um, in its name, it's identified as a Concert Snare Etude. So we want to be aware of that as we are interpreting any sort of uh, drags or roughs or rolls. I believe all the rolls in the etude are clearly marked as buzz rolls, but even if they weren't marked as buzz rolls, since we know it's a concert snare etude, we'd know that we want to interpret them as buzz rolls instead of double strokes or anything else. Um, it does have some specific sticking indicated in it um, that should be followed whenever you're playing the passages where sticking is indicated. Any place that there's not sticking indicated uh, you're allowed to uh, use whatever sticking is the most comfortable for you to create a good quality of sound and play nice, even rhythms. Uh, it's very important to play uh, the dynamics well, have a good differentiation between your softs and your louds, um, and make sure that, sure that they're consistent. Whenever you're playing mezzo forte up here in measure number one, you want that mezzo forte to sound the same as the mezzo forte in measure four, for example. And there's some dynamic changes that happen in between, but you want to make sure that all your mezzo fortes match each other, all your pianos match each other. Anytime it says pianissimo, you want that to be a little bit softer than your piano. So we want all the, the dynamics to, to, uh, to make sense relative to one another and to sound musical and consistent. Um, that's just about it. The, the last note that I'll mention is, is noted on the page as well. You can use whatever buzz roll meter works for you. In my examples that I'm going to play, at least the first one that I'm going to do, I'm going to use a 16th note triplet buzz roll meter uh, because that's just the, the buzz roll meter that I think will make it work the best for me at the tempo that I'm going to play it at. I'm going to model this thing at... Um, 70 beats per minute, which is the, the minimum speed, the minimum tempo that you should be uh, recording your performance at. You can play faster if you want. Um, if you get considerably faster, you might want to you know consider how that affects your buzz roll meter, right? Oops. Okay, I misstated that a little bit, so let me clarify. Firstly, you're not submitting a recording like we've talked about. You're actually playing this live for your assessment in a Google Meet on December 7th. Secondly, regarding tempo, 70 beats per minute is the minimum tempo that at which you must demonstrate mastery of all the musical elements of the etude in order to receive the highest possible score, the highest possible grade. However, you may and you should play it slower if you need to. If you discover while working on the etude that 70 beats per minute is too fast for you, then you should choose whatever tempo works for you to be able to play in time, maintain good technique, and demonstrate mastery of all the various musical elements included in the etude, meaning accurate rhythms, dynamics, Good quality of sound, smooth buzzes, consistent accents, drags, flams, etc. Mastery of these musical elements matters more than tempo. Okay, so serve those first. I'm going to try to count through this as I play. Um, and uh, if it seems to make sense to stop and point something out, I'll, I'll do that and then I'll restart. Uh, here we go. That's our quarter note playing at 70 beats per minute. One and two and ready and go. One and two and three and a four E and one and two and three E and four. One and two and three E and a four and one, two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and Four. One, two, triple at four. One E, a two, and three, triple at four. One and a rest, three, a four, and triple at triple at three, and four, and three, and a three, and triple at triple at four. One and two, and three, a one E, two E, three, and one, and two E, and a three, and one, and two, and three, and one. 
Okay. Uh, I didn't actually count through the first measure there. Um, I played the uh, etude on a drum pad sitting on top of a snare drum. Uh, so you could actually hear a little bit of the response from the snares in the bottom of my drum. But I think that um, that the dynamics were rep still represented well, even though I didn't play on the actual drum. You could still hear a difference between things. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way that came out. Um, please note that in measure 13, you make a shift to three, four time. All right, so I've been counting all the way to four counts in every measure for the first three lines of this etude. And then I make a shift uh, on the very last line to counting only three counts per measure, okay? Um, let's see what it sounds like if we try to play it a little faster. That was 70 beats per minute. Let's see what happens if I push it to 90. Now I'm gonna test out my roll meter. So I could play 16th note triplet roll meter, the same thing I just played. Triplet, 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 triplet one. That kind of works. It's almost on the edge of what might be a little faster than we need. Let me see what 16th note roll meter sounds like at this tempo. One E and a two E and a one. It might work better when I'm at that faster tempo. Um, and, uh, um, I'm actually going to keep it with the 16th note triplets. We'll see, see how we do. Here we go. One and two and ready, go. One and a two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and a four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One, two, triple it four. One e a two and three triple four. One and the rest three a four and triple it triple it three four. Tricky at the end of that, um, the last measure with the release, we've got a couple notes that are accented. One and two and, those have accents on them at the dynamic forte, which is loud. But then my next two notes, my last two notes in, in the A2 don't have accents. And one, three and one. They're flams, so we naturally sort of want to emphasize them a little more. Um, but we want to make sure that they're still loud, they're still forte but they don't have the same power as, as the two notes that happened before the flams. Accent, accent, flam, flam, right? Um, that's a subtle distinction. It's hard to pull that off and do it really well. Uh, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Good luck. Uh, I hope the counting makes sense. It's all something that we've looked at in class before. Um, th most of these rhythms have shown up in uh, another etude that we've looked at uh, in class. I've shifted them around a little bit in different positions um, and uh, kept most of them the same. If I've changed anything from, from the last etude we looked at in class, I've actually simplified some of the transitions a little bit. Okay, let me know if you guys have questions. Thanks, good luck.